It's Saturday the 23rd of November, it's about 10 in the morning. I'm off very shortly to go and do a bunch of readings to a group of clients over on the southwest coast of the Bristol Channel in England. And um, yeah, it'd be nice to get out on the road again, if only for, for one day. It's a weird day today, the moon's in early Leo, but do you know what, in the last three or four days, four or five days, there seems to have been a decrease in the levels of what I'm seeing as the intensity at the minute by minute level. Of course, as this pressure decreases, so the pressure that's been held in over this last couple of months is suddenly erupting in more localized areas, but hey. But it's got the feel of silly season about it. And I actually don't think there's going to be that much happening in the big picture. There'll be lots of little release valves, but nothing's going to happen in the really, really big picture now that's going to have deep, long-lasting meaning for, for a week or so now until we get into early December. And then things are going to happen very fast indeed, but more on that in a bit. Uh, but for the next week, now it's relatively chill time. So I'm just to today I'm just going to do part two of that section I was doing on asteroids because the minor asteroids to me do act as kind of homeopathic lasers and when given a really tight degree of orb well they work in a way that can be seen as specific now this is hypothetical theoretical there's no proof on how any of this works this is pure speculation on my part so before anyone starts jumping down my throat going you know this is hogwash yeah it might be but nevertheless, <laughs> this is how astrology is formed. So which we've covered half the minor asteroids. Let's look at the other half. Um, I'm not going to look at the major asteroids. Uh, done them. I'll do them again in the future. So I'm not looking at Vesta so much. Um, Urania. Urania, Urania. This is known as the astrologer's asteroid. And I find it particularly interesting but today, of all days, it is exactly opposite the Earth from the Sun. It is exactly the other side of the Sun from the Earth today. The day of the exact Uranus-Pluto square. Which again falls on the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who, which you just couldn't make it up really. Time travel, 50 years celebration, Uranus-Pluto square exact, and Urania, the astrologer's asteroid, exactly opposite the Earth or conjunct the sun from our perspective. Um, Terpsichore, there's an interesting little asteroid. Again, half a degree, but conjunctions or oppositions of Terpsichore, especially in a child's chart, get that child into dance school. Fleet of feet. Dancers through life. Strong Terpsichore, strong dancer. Really, squares, tri and sextiles to the minor asteroids don't really cut it, in my opinion. I'm just too insensitive to work with these refined archetypes. If you're that sensitive, you can actually feel these influences and, of course, work with them. I'm, I'm not like that. Sappho, that's an interesting one. It's often an indicator of empathy not necessarily attraction, but empathy towards one's own gender. It's one of the asteroids that is more common than normal in the interaction of relationship between same-sex couples. Um, psyche does what it says on the tin. It's your capacity to be psychically sensitive. Psychically sensitive at a more intuitive and receptive level rather than kinetic or projective level. Ah, uh, Pandora, Pandora. It wasn't a box, it was an urn. But yeah, hope did stay behind when all the other vices left. Pandora's always the paradox. It's always the interesting one. Wherever Pandora is, is where you can be insatiably curious and risky and a little bit petulant. So, caution. Nemesis. Not really had that much experience of that. Not really seen that much in people's charts, so I'm not qualified to talk on that. Um, and, of course, Lilith. Now, there is... Various levels of Lilith in astrology. 
75% of which I think are total hogwash. There is this wonderful hypothetical planet Lilith. It's one of the hypotheticals to which I only can, I can only say, I'm sorry, yawn. Then there is this dark moon Lilith that often appears on horoscopes as like a vertical banana moon on top of a cross. And it's like, whoa, I don't like that. Dark moon Lilith, what's that then? Is it a body in space? No, no, it's not. Oh, well, in that case, it's hypothetical. I understand that the Ascendant, the Midheaven and the North Node are hypothetical, but they've been proven to have worked over the millennia. Dark Moon Lilith, or for that matter, any of the other hypotheticals, are hypothetical for a very good reason. They don't bloom and exist. But then there is an asteroid called Lilith. In a nutshell, raw, aggressive, violent, direct action towards anyone or anything who oppresses and suppresses, particularly regardless of your gender, if your feminine energy is being suppressed and repressed by something that's much more patriarchal or archaic. That's the negative side. The equally strong positive side of Lilith is conflict resolution, the bringing of opposing sides together and the making of two and two to equal five. It's called synergy, where the, uh, the effort of two people applied together is greater than the sum of the two individual efforts put together after the event. I like Lilith. You can work with Lilith. Minor asteroids, check them out, folks. Half a degree, perhaps a degree, under one degree, at the very most for strong conjunctions or oppositions. Apart from that, that's it. Okay, have a great day. Catch you probably tomorrow. Cheers. Bye.